Hi guys, my name is Shada Campbell and this is an 11th apartment video. I'll start with a fun fact. 90% of people who've tried to create a gallery wall in their apartment complain of a similar problem. Not enough cool pictures to put in their pretty frames. Okay, I just made that up. But if you've ever tried to make a gallery wall or hang a gallery wall in your home, you've probably come up with this problem. You go to Ikea or wherever and you get all these cool frames and you arrange them and of course you have a few family or vacation photos and some interesting artwork, but inevitably you have one or two frames that you need to fill and you don't have anything to put in them. So today's video tutorial is going to address that very specific of problems. We're going to be doing some fun, punchy graphic artwork that's just perfect for incorporating into a gallery wall. It's not high art, it's just interesting illustration that goes par perfectly as part of a grouping of other artwork. So let's get started. So the supplies for today's project include watercolor paper. I'm using uh, five by seven sheets of this Strathmore 140 pound, and that's great because I don't have to stretch it. So do grab 140 pound paper. And get yourself some tracing paper and some graphite transfer paper. We'll be using that. And then as for the paint, I'm using this set of um, craft quality watercolor discs, and I just picked that up at Michael's. I'm pretty sure that's where I got that. And then grab two Two glasses of clean water, one for cool and one for warm colors. And in addition to that, we're just going to need some small paint brushes. You can grab those at the dollar store or at any art store. And then we'll be finishing our project with an artist pen, something like the Stadler Tripless Fine Liner. So our little art project begins with a traced image. Now you can sketch something out yourself. You can do a nice sketch and then trace it to sort of perfect it and create a contour drawing. A contour drawing is just lines. Um, but you are certainly welcome to find something online or find something in a book. You know, you could grab a book of beautiful botanical illustrations and just trace the image so that you have a nice, perfect contour drawing. So get something on a piece of tracing paper, whether you draw it or just trace it, um, doesn't matter. And we're going to start from there. And then once you have your image um, all ready, Grab that watercolor paper and you're going to take your trace, um, which you've got on your tracing paper there, and just tape it in place. So wherever you want it to sit, um, just put it there. And then, of course, we're going to transfer it using that graphite transfer paper. So lay it underneath the tracing paper, dark side down, and then you're going to go over your contour drawing with a mechanical pencil to uh, transfer the image. So now that it's on your watercolor paper, I've got a couple things here. I did one diamond contour drawing, and then I've also got a feather there. Um, so I've got my, both of my images are transferred, and now I'm ready to paint. To begin my painting process here, I'm using the clean water that I have, and I'm just getting these discs really wet, almost turning them into little pools, and then I'm splashing that water, that paint on the page. I want it to be messy and free and whimsical. I don't, um, you don't need to worry about the lines or the contour drawing. Sort of splash the paint around a little bit. You want to get it a little bit outside the lines, and it's going to create this cool kind of psychedelic fun uh, fun look. I'm using um, sort of a primary color palette. It's a bit of an altered primary color. I'm kind of using a magenta instead of red, so I've got yellow, blue, and magenta. I think that's a really nice... Anytime you take a classic palette and just change it slightly, that looks really good. And I'm putting some little dots around the outside, and I just want it to look messy and free, and just letting the color bleed colors bleed into each other a little bit. And then once I've got lots of paint on there, I'm just going to slide it out of the way um, so that no drips uh, fall down the page and I'll let it dry really well. And here I'm just mixing up my paints for my feather. I'm letting, uh, getting lots of water in there. And I don't know if this is good or bad form, but I tend to mix my colors right on the discs, right on the palette. And I can always clean them up later. So I have fun mixing. I don't just use the colors that, you know, I got from the store. I like to mix them up a little bit myself. And for the feather, I'm going to do peach and blue with a little violet in the middle. And again, I'm just 
letting the paint sort of do its own thing and I'm letting the colors run a little bit and I think it looks just really pretty and free. It's one of those things you can't mess up. You're not trying to stay in the lines. In fact, it's the opposite. You're trying to let the paint sort of run and do its own thing and that's gonna give it the charm really. Now I've got my pastel feather all set there and I'll slide it out of the way to prevent any drips from forming. And when your project is dry, just check to make sure that it's totally bone dry. It helps to feel on the back side of the paper to make sure it's not damp. And then when you are sure it's dry, you're just going to take your artist pen, the Staedtler Tripless Fine Liner is what I'm using, and you're going to use that initial contour drawing as your guide and you're just going to ever so carefully follow those lines. Don't use a Sharpie Ultra Fine Point for this. They will bleed um, into watercolor paper so use a, a proper artist pen like the Staedtler. And and you can add as many or as few lines as you like. On my diamond here, I've just done a simple strong contour drawing, so just lines, not really any shading. And I think that looks wonderful with this sort of messy um, splashiness of the color. And then on my feathers, I've done uh, something different yet again. On the one, I've done nice line shading, kept it quite simple, but still nice line shading. And then on the second, I've gone in with the artist pen and added all this sort of almost tribal design. So you can see um, it looks good if you want to add a lot or a little bit of design and line shading, and that's totally up to you. And that's the easy art. That's really all there is to it. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's video and I will meet you back here next Friday with a new video tutorial. See you then!